tempo you wanted? Yeah. Great. That's a huge improvement. We got rid of the runaway yeah. arm, right? Yeah. Mickey's wearing an Army of Darkness t-shirt just for you. Just for, that, just for that chainsaw arm we talked about. Yeah, they got away from you. So you settled that down. Brilliant. Uh, did they do everything you wanted? A little bit. A little bit, yeah. Why don't you do it again? I, okay. think, I think they will. I think they caught on to it just about halfway there. I think okay. this time they'll sure. be more malleable for you right there. Sticking that beat is two, isn't it? Yeah. You know, one, two, you're stuck kind of still, and then you made kind of a quick release, didn't you? See, that's a cutoff. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's a cutoff. So, would you suggest like just a, kind of a, something like that? Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that I believe in, and you can believe in it if you want or not, okay? I will not be offended. This is music, not geometry. But one of the things that I believe in, I believe that releases go up and cutoffs move down. Okay. And there's lots of repertoire where you want a cutoff. You know, if, it's, if it's, it tends to be maybe more modern repertoire, you want something that's got a real edge on that silence before the silence exists, that's a cutoff. Mm -hmm. To my ear and my sensibilities, that's down. That's yeah, off. But something I want to resonate through the room, right. to me, that moves up. Because I want, the, literally, I want those sine waves to keep bouncing off the walls for a little while. So the first question to you is if you, what is this to you? Is this last? No, this is a release. This is a release. Yeah. So to, I agree, and to me it's a release. So I would move one, uh, three and a one, two, and I would just make a gentle gesture and I would try to, to finish it, for lack of a better term, a more graceful term, finish it with a bit of a tail. Dee da dee da dee dee, and and now we're treating it like a fermata, which it's not. So let's be careful, right? right? Three e and a one two. So I guess I just drag the tip a little bit. Okay. I would try to pull the paintbrush horizontally, maybe slightly diagonal. I wouldn't want to go three e and a one two, right? Or three e and a one two. I wouldn't want any, any downward motion. No, and, and no um, static, no stopping, no stagnation. Three e and a one two. I would just have re visual resonance. Maybe that's a term we can patent, right? Visual sonority, visual resonance, visual motion. Because I want the note to keep moving. Okay. If I wanted be da di da di da, I would do something more stabby in Levon technique, more flicky in Levon technique, and I would stop sooner because I've, in my mind, the sound waves, the sound waves are stopped. Okay. How about um, now? Now we get back to the to the fun stuff. Everybody noticed he's trying to put a rollantando in there, right? Now, the first time, I thought most of us noticed it a little bit late. Second time, I think everybody noticed it, but it still didn't quite happen. Why not, players? Let's play French chamber musicians for our conductors at the seminar. He's, you, you, you saw he was trying to make Roland Tondo, but still didn't quite happen. Why? Brett? Um, it felt a little unclear to me as how slow... Let's run with that. Why? why if that's correct. Why was it unclear? Um, I felt like personally the baby beat three specifically, like I had the downbeat and I knew where that was, but then you kind of like stuttered a little bit and the okay. end of three was like sketchy as to where it was. Okay. I think it was just not seen. Okay. Yeah, those are all, I agree with all those. There's <coughs> another, I think there's a why. Yeah. Um, like, I felt like you weren't breaking the like, the cobra back up too. Which 
still more symptom than illness, I think. Nope, that's, you're all thinking maybe more detailed. Abby, Gail? Um. <laughs> My daughter's best friend is now at elementary school, Abby. So she was talking about Abby all morning. So there you go, Abby, Gail. <laughs> um, I personally felt like there was some communication that wasn't going on. I didn't okay. feel as if you were really engaged in us, and all of a sudden that was happening. So I didn't really know there was there was no emotive gesture, nothing. I didn't really see anything much change in your pattern, except for all of a sudden it was kind of slower. Okay. And it kind of threw me off. Okay. I saw more hands than hers a moment ago. Um, I don't know if maybe you were exactly sure what you wanted to do. Um, if you were, then maybe you didn't have any thoughts here. No, that um, exactly what you wanted. Let me ask you guys a question. When when we have retardando and rollentando, how much specificity is is in that information? Get it in a score. How general? Another way to ask a question. How how free really are we when we see retardando or rollentando? Does anything goes? No. Not quite. No. So. Why and how? Why not? Why not? Anything goes. It says slow down. If I'm going 90 clicks a minute. Why can't I go 45? 25. It says Are we slow going down. Right back to 90 afterwards? That's one factor. Yeah, yes, that's one factor. Well, let's even re point. irregardless. One of my favorite non existent <laughs> words. Um, that is a correct. Statement and information we need. What's happening next? So if it says Rollentando and it's 90, and then the, the next tempo is 60, well, he wants us to go from 90 to 60 in, the, in those gestures, in those beats. Uh, so yes, but let's set that on aside for a moment. Let's put that on the shelf. Even that 90 to 60. In the first bar, is it okay to go from, let's say it's a four bar Rollentando between 90 and 60. Is it okay to go from 90 to 72 in the first two beats? And then from 72 to 60 in the next 20 beats? No, or should it, gradual. should it be even and gradual? Our common practice is that it should be even and gradual. Our common practice is that a rollentando should feel like I rolled a tennis ball gently across the floor and we watched it come to rest. If we saw that tennis ball roll across a flat floor halfway, everybody in the room, even if I stopped the thing, could get pretty close to where they think it'll end up. Like, right? If I rolled a tennis ball 20 feet and I, and I rolled it, well, let's not say 20, speed, 20 feet, let's just talk about speed. If I rolled it, let it go 10 feet, and then I stopped it, you guys will get pretty close where you would guess it's going to end up because you know how that, that's going to organically slow down, naturally slow down, you can predict it. What I, what I thought was the, the overriding factor of the whole thing is that your Rolantondo got disconnected from that slowing down tennis ball. Okay. It, was, yeah. it was not quite an organic change in the tempo. Was, there was an abrupt change. And when there's an abrupt change, they can't deal with it that fast. We're, right. we're, we're a predictive art. The musicians are predictive animals. We have to move in predictable kinds of ways, even mm -hmm. when it's unpredictable to the listener, because it's there on the score, and it's something we've rehearsed. Um, Re, uh, accelerometers are the same. If you imagine the golf ball or the tennis ball rolled up the hill, it comes nearly to a stop and then it rolls down the hill and it picks up speed, the accelerometer would pick up speed organically in the same way that the gravity would affect the ball. Okay? So we'll just do the first few bars, but I want to go through that again and see if that makes some kind of sense in your mind. Sure. If you're gonna if you're gonna slow down each eighth note is in the ballpark of the one before it in a Venn diagram kind of way. In a Russian dolls kind of a way. <coughs> you can get slower, but they've all got to keep holding hands with their neighbor. Okay. Can't be disconnected. Give it a round. Mm -hmm. 